The distributed loads shown on the beam represent one way to model a cantilevered beam. In general, if we have a cantilevered beam, we draw it as a wall and a beam stuck into it as if it were somehow magically glued to that spot. Of course, in the real world, that can actually happen. This beam has to be connected somehow. We can model this as assuming that the beam is stuck into the wall by some distance. In this case, it's 0.15 meters, and that the wall is pressing both on the top and the bottom of the beam to keep it there. I want to know what W1 and W2 are to maintain equilibrium, given that the loadings are triangular. And I want to know what the shear and bending moment diagrams look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to draw a free body diagram. So I'll have my 600 Newton load out at the end that I'm going to write as 0.6 kilonewtons. This is 3 meters, and I'm going to break the 0.15 up into 0.05 meters each at each of these three spots, because then I can say that the equivalent point load from the top triangle which acts a third of the way from the big end, will act here at this spot A, which is 0.05 from the end of the beam. And the second one will act up at 0.1 end from the end of the beam. The equivalent point loads, which I'm representing here on my free body diagram, are the area of, under that triangle. So one-half base times height will give me one-half W1 times 0.15 on the top, and one-half W2 times 0.15 on the bottom. If I write my equations of equilibrium, there aren't any forces in the x direction. The forces in the y give me 1 half W2 times 0.15. That's all that I have acting up. And acting down, I have 1 half W1 times 0.15 and the 0 0.6 kilonewton load acting down. I want to sum the moments at point A so that I can eliminate the W1 part. The W2 part that's my equivalent point load, 1 half W2 times 0.15, acts at a distance of 0.05 meters away from A. And my second moment is the 0.6 kilonewtons acting at 3.1 meters away from A. They're in opposite directions, so one has to be equal to the other, and you can solve to get W2 is 496 kilonewtons per meter, and W1, if you substitute back into the sum of the forces in Y, is 488 kilonewtons per meter. So this is the answer to the first part of your question. What are W1 and W2 to maintain equilibrium? To be able to answer the second question, we need to figure out what the loadings are. Remember, if you have a beam and somebody's pushing down with three pounds and somebody else is pushing down up with two pounds over the same bit of area, you have a net one pound down. Well, that's what I want to do here. I want to consider this pushing down at 488 kilonewtons per meter and the other one pushing up and I'm just going to add them up just like you would if they were one pound or two pounds. Now I need to be able to add them up with respect to x I need to re express them in terms of a, a uh, equation for the line. The w1 part acts with a y-intercept of 488 kilonewtons per meter and the slope is 488 divided by 0.15 times x that slope is negative, and W of X then, or W1 of X, if you want to call it that, this part of my distributed load is positive because it's acting down. The W2 part over here, the one that's pressing up, has to have negative numbers because W, when I'm dealing with, with my distributed loads, are positive down. So to make this have negative numbers, I have a y-intercept of zero, and I have a slope of negative 496 over 0.15 times x. What I want to do is take this pressing down load and this pressing up load and add them up. That's going to be my total W. So W of x, if you multiply that out, is 488 minus 6560 times x in kilonewtons per meter. Once you've got this part, now I can integrate W to figure out what V is. I have to do it in, in at least a couple sections though, because between 0 and 0.15 I'm going to have that distributed load. After that I'm not going to have the distributed load. So between 0 and 0.15 I can integrate. And I get w, V is the in, negative the integral of W of x dx plus whatever my V naught would be if I had a point load at 0. I don't have a point load at 0, so that goes away. And my V of x is equal to negative the integral from 0 to x of 488 minus 6560x gives me v is negative 488x 
plus 6560x squared over 2 in kilonewtons per meter. Double check that what you've got here makes some sense. What does my w look like? If I plot w of x, in fact, if you plot w1 of x, make sure your equation of the line looks correct. And you get 488 at, at the beginning, and at x equals 0.15, it goes down to 0, and you're all set. So this is the w1 part. The w2 part starts at 0 and goes down to negative 496. That gives you en encouragement. w, when you plot it, either in a calculator or by plugging in numbers, goes from 488 at x equals 0 to negative 496 at x equals 0.15. This gives us great hope that what we've got here is an accurate representation of my distributed load. But I'm going to want to know where that crosses. Why am I going to want to know where that crosses? Because for this part of the area, V is going to be decreasing. And for this part of the area, V is going to be increasing. That gives me hope that I know what I'm, that my graph is going to be correct. If you graph this, either in a graphing calculator or on a computer or in some other fashion, you end up with V in kilonewtons from 0 to 0 0.15 meters decreases until you get to some point, which we haven't figured out yet, and then increases again past 0 up to the value of 0 0.6. Now we can draw a free body diagram of just the very end of the beam for any x between 3.15 and 3.15, and I can look at what my equations, what my internal forces would be, and you can see that V is going to have to be equal to 0.6 all the way until you get to the very end of your beam for any x between 0.15 and 3.15 for x in meters. Now I do have to actually identify what my maximum V is. This is a critical point in V. A critical point in V happens when the derivative of V is, goes to zero. Well, the derivative of V is W. So when does W go to zero? You have an equation for W. It's right here. Set that part equal to zero to figure out where W crosses the x-axis. This spot right here is going to be 0 0.07439 meters. That's the spot where V is at its minimum. Now you can plug that number into your equation for V to figure out what your maximum shear load is. This gives you negative 18.15 kilonewtons at 0 0.07439 meters. That's my shear diagram. To get my bending moment diagram, I'm going to integrate V. Again, be careful. If you had a moment at the end of the beam, you'd have to take that into account, but you do not. So that goes to zero. I can integrate for my integral between my interval between 0 and 0.15, negative 488x plus 3280x squared, which is what 6560 divided by 2 is, and I get negative 488x squared over 2 plus 3280x cubed over 3, or minus 244x squared plus 1093 and a third x cubed. That's my equation for M. Now I can draw a shear and bending, a, sh a bending moment diagram. M in kilonewton meters between 0 and 0 0.15 is this equation. Between 0 and 0 0.07439, V is decreasing and the area is below the axis. So M is decreasing concave down. But at this point, V is a minimum, which means M has a inflection point right there. V is still below the x-axis, so M is still decreasing, but at this point, V is now, V, the value is increasing, even though it's negative, it's an increasing value, which means M is now concave up. So you have this nice sort of S-curve for your M. Past 0.15, V is above the x-axis, and you have a nice linear V, so you, a constant V gives you a linear M, with a slope equal to the value of m, of the value of v. So this is my value for v, and the increase here, the distance between my m value at 0.15 and my m value at 3.15 is the area under my v curve. That gives you negative 1.8 kilonewton meters. Double check it. If you plug in 
0.15 into my equation for m, do you get negative 1.8? In fact, you do, which means that you are dealing with a bending moment diagram that is most likely accurate. It comes back to zero at the end of the beam, which is encouraging, and you have your shear and bending moment diagrams. Please note, our applied load was 0 0.6 kilonewtons, and our maximum bending moment, internal moment, was 1.8 kilonewton meters, three times the value of your shear load at the tip. Your shear load here is also about three times of what you ended up with. This is why when you put a load on the tip of a beam, you break it off at the wall.